Let's look at this question. Question number one, which is how can fragments of DNA be separated? So when we're talking about separation of DNA, we're talking about um, having the the small fragments of DNA. Um, so if we have a if we have the DNA traveling along like this, then the small fragments of DNA will be at the bottom, whereas the large fragments of DNA will be stuck at the top because it can't go very far. And then you have your medium-sized ones here, and then your even small, um, smaller-sized ones there, etc. And that process is actually through gel electrophoresis because the DNA has to go through the gel. The larger the process, the larger the pieces of DNA, the less far that it can get through gel. It's like saying if you're in a, in a playground and you've got like a fat kid and he goes through to one of those rings and he gets stuck in the ring, he can't go very far. Whereas if you've got like the skinny kids down here, they, they have no trouble. They can go through the rings, they can go past that into the second and third stages. So in this case, the answer is B. So the, may, the majority of the other answers are mainly um, red herring answers. The polymerase chain reaction, it's not that one. Polymerase chain reaction, what that does is it doesn't actually separate DNA. What this one does is that it copies it or amplifies it. Okay? C, using gene transfer. So gene transfer is not where you separate DNA. You actually want to put that from one organism into another. So it's like placing it or transferring it. And finally, gene cloning is not that one. Let's look at our second question. The diagram below re represents the results obtained in a DNA profile from a crime scene. Suspect 2 is most likely to be the criminal because the band pattern co coincides with that of the crime scene sample. So if we look here, correct, that's right. So it's correct. What do these bands represent? So this is exactly what we were talking about before. This is a, this is a, a gel. gel from a gel electrophoresis. And it represents, each one of these little ones, they represent DNA fragments. So the ones which are further away, are they larger or smaller? They're larger, so these ones are larger. Sorry, I've got myself confused. These ones that are further away from the top are actually smaller. So let's look at question two. So the diagram below shows the results obtained in a DNA profile from a crime scene. So suspect two is most likely to be the criminal because the band pattern coincides with the, uh, the crime scene sample. So in this case, yes, it is. Um, you're t it's very true. It's, uh, it is indeed uh, coincide with the crime scene sample. But then it talks about why later on that the band, what these band patterns actually represent. And what they actually represent is similar to what we talked about in the previous one. So we talked about how um, these, uh, these bands actually represent fragments of DNA. And the ones which are, are down the bottom, they've actually traveled further. So what they actually are, are smaller fragments of DNA. Because remember that the small ones or the small kids, they can get through further, uh, further places within the gel. Whereas the larger ones at the top, they are kind of stuck, they get stuck by them. So the answer is A, DNA fragments. Let's look at the other ones. So they've got genes, no that's incorrect. Uh, chromosomes, no that's incorrect, and chromatids, so they're all incorrect. It's just that you need to know that different fragment sizes um, travel through the gel at different rates. Let's look at question three now. Which enzymes are needed to incorporate genes into plasmids to create recombinant plasmids? Remember that a plasmid is like a circular DNA, and then if we cut this uh, plasmid and we can insert an extra bit of information or an extra gene into it. So let's make this um, let's make this gene uh, in green and black. And if you cut that open now and you insert that into the here, what you end up getting is something like this.
So you get that extra green gene spliced into there. And that's called a recombinant plasmid. So this is your recombinant plasmid just down here, okay? But what enzyme is involved in that? So the thing that uh, cuts it open is tends to be a restriction enzyme. And the thing that connects it up or links it together is a ligase or a ligase. Okay, so that means that this answer here is correct. Restriction enzymes and ligase. So A, B and D are incorrect, and let's see why. So ligase over here in A is correct, but DNA polymerase is incorrect. DNA polymerase is involved in DNA replication, which actually copies the, the code um, during mitosis, not involved in genetic engineering or recombining plasmids. How about B, DNA polymerase? Once again, this is incorrect. D, helicase and restriction enzymes. So helicase is actually evolved in DNA replication as well. And what that does is that it's an enzyme, it's an ase, which actually unwinds the helix. So it unwinds the helix and is involved in DNA replication, so it's not D. Therefore, the answer is C. Good. So question number four. What could be achieved by DNA profiling using gel electrophoresis? So gel electrophoresis we talked about before, which was the movement of um, DNA fragments through a, an electrically charged gel, so that the smaller ones travel through a lot. So small goes through a lot, and the large fragments, they don't go through as much. And each, one, each person's uh, DNA profile is usually um, unique. So we'll look at the different answers. So with gel electrophoresis, we're usually thinking about uh, paternity testing um, as well as crime scene analysis. Those are the two main ones. So if we look around about here, we can see that we're talking about crime here. Talking about crime. So therefore the correct answer is B. But let's look at why the other ones are wrong. The chromosome number of an organism could be counted. No, that's incorrect. Because a chromosome number is counted in a karyotype, not in a gel electrophoresis. A karyotype could be produced. We're talking about karyotypes again. D, an extinct species of living organisms could be brought back to life. This is actually the process of cloning or DNA cloning. So we're not talking about gel electrophoresis here either. There are plenty more YouTube videos for you to check out, just click on the links below. If you'd like to download the questions, as well as the answers, make sure to like us on Facebook first. And finally, if you'd like to find out how I got a 7 in high-level IB biology, make sure to check out our website in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks.